Good morning, folks. We've got things to discuss today. We head back into the sun and earth and climate discussions in depth, but first, we'll watch a small CME erupt on the sun and don't blink as we begin at spaceweathernews.com because by the end of this sentence, the CME will be over. We'll show it again in a moment, but first, the small coronal hole area pinched between the active regions is a virtually no concern. The sunspots on the south are the big ones, but are stabilizing. Like a middle school dance, we've got boys on one side, girls on the other. Right looks better to me. Such separation is not conducive to flaring. The small CME, of course, came once again as a pop field collapse and snap out that is much more gorgeous than it is dangerous, and this one was on the north. It will minimally affect the solar wind, which has plateaued off the entry into the faster stream a few days ago. Its peak was modest only, and we're already coming off it, so geomagnetic conditions are calm. Folks, there's a tropical system over Cuba right now, and over the coming hours it is going to shift northward. Over the following hours it is supposed to shift west but stall out a bit, so it could be more than just a short run-up for this one. One of the models even has it going west and then back east to hit Florida a second time. Folks, let's go back a couple of days to the number one climate journal on the planet. This was the story where, after a 2020 that was as brutal on climate science as it was for the rest of us, they determined that modern climate forecasts are too uncertain and subject to bias and error. They need a lot of work before they can even be considered useful. Of course, this is not making the news because of a pandemic and Dominion voting machines, but hey, it's the truth. Their models are garbage. Take it up with the hundreds of scientists who led to this with their studies this year or the number one climate journal if you have an issue. And that brings us to today. We continue with this. We know there are a number of issues with the models, the oversensitivity to CO2 being a big one, but the manifestations in error propagation have a root cause, and that is uncertainty. Uncertainty about cloud forcing, cloud nucleation, and aerosols. Need to fix that to make useful climate statements. Also need to fix broken science when it is realized. Do you remember all of that scariness about the thinning Arctic ice? Oops. Turns out that the ice sat was broken. It had a systematic bias of 50 centimeters, which obviously made it look like the ice was melting supremely quickly. Of course, when Cryosat 2 got up there, the ice magically bounced back 50 centimeters. Either we have a magic polar region, or the entirety of the last decade's Arctic ice discussion was complete nonsense. Folks, we're back at Super Flares, and they're looking at the Charlemagne event in 774 AD. While the modern era record for flaring is 1859, the Carrington event, isotopes suggest the 774 event was much bigger. And indeed, they are coming up with something between X285 for a single event, or X180 if it was a double tap. Either way, this fits nicely with the previous examinations we've seen, and it puts the 774 AD event in the green, the lower super flare category. Critical aspect of these cycles of recurrence is their leading up to the 12,000 year event. By the way, last one was about 12,000 years ago. But of course, we don't need something like that to end the world now. Right now, the Earth's magnetic field is fading, and the chances of a solar-induced Bronze Age grow by the day. We're in the gray bar area in terms of field loss, and it wouldn't even take a major flare to overcome the systems at this time. If it is a double tap, the KP extensions before the second one detail the enhanced risks. This chart is available for free at spaceweathernews.com. Let's talk for a moment about cosmic rays, the least accounted for space energy and climate and human health. In our textbook are dozens of the best articles on how they work the clouds, trigger lightning, change pressure cells, alter viscosity of silica-rich magma, break DNA, affect hippocampal processes, degrade the locus ceruleus ability to manage panic and fear. It changes blood pressure, heart rate, stroke and cardiac arrest risks. Today, after we've been saying so for about two years, it is officially in the AGU. We are at the modern cosmic ray maximum. There is utterly no chance that cosmic rays have hit these marks in hundreds of years. Nobody alive has ever seen anything like the space energy we're taking in now, and it's only going to get worse as the magnetic field continues to weaken. Folks, both our textbook and the pre-order of our catastrophism book are at otf.cells.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun.
eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.